What are China's main objectives with the Belt and Road Initiative? Um, I think it's hard to say there's a single objective. You know, clearly, China has become a much more important part of the global economy um, as a, um, a more important power. Clearly, under President Xi, it is um, one to play a bigger role in world affairs. And uh, President Xi has made the BRI a bit of an umbrella event. It started off just being um, an infrastructure project or an overland link to Europe or the Maritime Road as a, a link by sea to Europe. It now includes the, the polar route, it includes Indonesia, it includes the South Pacific. So to, to some um, degree, I think it's just a, a summary of um, China's aspirations to play a bigger part in the global economy, particularly in Eurasia uh, and the Asia-Pacific region. All right. Uh, what are the main sources of conflict within the Belt and Road Initiative? Yeah, I think I, I made in my presentation here. I made a big distinction between the overland belt, which is the the rail connection from between China and Europe, which I mean, very much have uh, been a win-win um, story, uh, the, improving the the overland links to reduce the cost of trade between China and Europe, which has been very important for key industries like the car industry, electronics industry, but also now one of the regular rail services has been important in linking the, 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 two, the two economies. The, the, the maritime road has been more controversial because it has involved specific ports, um, the ones that have become the most, most notorious are in Sri Lanka, uh, to some extent in, in Pakistan, um, where uh, and Piraeus in Greece, where Chinese loans have turned into an ownership stake. Um, is this a, a strategic move to gain control over the, the world's shipping lanes and a, bl a blue sea policy in the Indian Ocean, you know, a challenge to India and Kashmir? Yeah, those are all um, much more controversial issues. Um, but in a sense, uh, it, it's kind of inevitable it's going to be controversy when you've got a rising power. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you see a united European response to the PRI? Uh, I think the European response has been a bit mixed so far since the BRI was first announced in 2013. We had at the, uh, the launch event in May 2017 in Beijing yeah, a bit of a mixed response. Most of the EU member countries had a representation there. Some of them made a point of being at different levels, sort of ministerial or head of government levels. Um, different degrees of warmth towards the AIIB, but I think, mean, you know, on the whole it, it has held together. The biggest challenge I think, came when um, China um, developed its interest in Perea, supporting in Greece, and was developing um, links with Eastern European countries, which was seen by the major EU countries, major countries, say Japan, uh, Japan say Germany and France, um, was seen as an attempt at create internal divisions in the EU. That was really resolved when um, uh, Premier Li Keqiang came to, to Europe in 2018 and had meetings in Berlin and Brussels. Um, and I think there's very much a sense that there's more cooperation between the EU and China, particularly in the face of challenges to the global system coming from the United States in the last two years, uh, that they should be working together and collaborating rather than trying to compete. Okay, thank you. Okay.